Let's take a look at how you can use Garibaldi Pro to communicate with Echoflex equipment that has already been installed in a system. So this is when you go to site, you have Garibaldi Pro running with that serial interface dongle plugged in and your Echoflex equipment up and running. So I've started a new little project. I've just got three devices in this system, two ER6 CDs and a PTM365. So these items are already in my project device types. I pulled them over manually, and when I go and select any of them, you'll notice that in the device info tab, there's no radio ID entered. There are a couple of ways to get this radio ID when you are on site, and it does depend on what type of product you're looking at. The ER6 CD is a controller, it's an output device, so our options are manual entry or discovered controllers. The PTM365 is a control device, so it's a switch in this case. So your option would be manual entry, teach button, or switch press. In this case, teach is more for your sensors and switch is more for your switches. So coming back to the ER6 CD, we're going to go to discovered controllers and we are going to click to begin. You'll get a pop-up and a couple of options. The main one that you want to focus on is find slash refresh. And when you click this, you will get an additional pop-up that is your dongle actually querying into the space to find the equipment. It can take a little bit depending how much equipment you have installed. So give it some time. It's just gonna pull everyone in as soon as possible. So in this case, we see two ER6 CDs. I do actually have other equipment out there but since I am selecting the ER6CD, this window will only show me the items that it finds of the same type. You'll notice the green text, and that is talking about signal strength. Green is good, yellow is okay, and red is not so great. You'll also see the radio ID of each unit. So even though it shows it, I may not know which one is which circuit. In order to figure that out, you can select the line and click identify. And it's going to cause the controller to wink and blink its output. So once I've identified, figured out which one's which, I can go ahead and pull them in. So I'm gonna select this guy. And if you come back over to manual entry, you'll notice the radio ID here. So I am going to rinse and repeat over with my other unit. And you'll notice that since we've already pulled this in once, it's automatically there still, but if something were to be added, you can always choose to refresh. So I'm gonna select this and add it. And then I'm gonna take a look at my PTM365. So again, you don't have the option to discover controllers in here. And you will also notice a couple of things when we go to our discovered controllers tab. So, we don't see the PTM365 here, even though I have a couple nearby. We just see an ERNR. So when I pulled in everything before, the ER6 CDs would have been listed here, but this will also list every single type. And if you want to find and refresh or to identify, those options are down at the bottom. Coming back to the PTM365, we don't have the ability to discover it the way that we do with controllers, but once you have them added into your project, you can use your teach or your switch press, depending on the type of your unit. So in this case, I'm gonna do switch press, and I'm going to choose to begin, and it's gonna give me an option and a pop-up to tell me how to identify, depending on what type of unit I have. In this case, it's just a regular rocker switch, so I'm going to press three times on the upside, and it pulls in that radio ID and says it's been identified. So I will click OK, and when I come back to manual entry, you'll notice that the radio ID is there.